Welcome to Life Devotions. Thank you for joining me today. It's beginning to rain again. That's the title of this devotion. Now, for those of us that are living in Britain and watch this, that would not be a surprise if you heard that on the news. Yeah, it's going to rain. Because here in Britain, we get lots of rain, so everything is green. And that's a real blessing. Sometimes we get a bit too much rain and there are floods, which especially for farmers can be quite challenging. But I'm not talking about this kind of rain, you know, and yes, I believe we can pray for rain, you know, and that the Lord gives rain for the harvest, but he also gives rain for the nourishment where we have drought. I'll never forget ministering in Ethiopia many years ago. And I didn't know it, but they had a drought there. And while I was preaching to, to leaders, and there was many of them, about 11,000 of them, and I was preaching and the Spirit of the Lord just came to my thoughts while I was preaching. And I said, I see that you're all very hot. And it was over 40 degrees Celsius. I said, I'm gonna ask the Lord to bring a cloud before the sun and cause cool wind to come and, and cool you down. And a few minutes later, it came and it began to rain that evening and everybody worshiped God because I didn't know that it had a drought and God gave it. So you know the Lord is able to bring the rain. For those people, it was more a sign of God than the rain. You understand, the rain was important, was necessary for the animals, for the harvests, for drinking water. So it was extremely important. But more than that, for those people, they knew this was God. And this is so important that we realize that it, every good and perfect gift comes from our Heavenly Father with whom there's no shadow of turning. And that He is the one that wants to give rain. And the kind of rain I'm talking about is where His blessings begins to rain down upon your life. You see, it says here in Psalm 31 verse 19, Oh, how great, David says, is your goodness which you have laid up for those who fear you, which you have prepared for those who trust in you in the presence of the sons of man. You see, God has things prepared for us. I really believe this. He has things stored up for us today. I believe God has good things stored up for me, for Virginia. So no matter that we get challenged, and we have Virginia, and I have really been challenged. Virginia went through some very serious physical challenges, and some of it is still coming through it. But without question, it's a lot better. But you know, we keep having this expectancy that's called the spirit of faith. That's called Christ in us, the hope of glory. This expectancy that our Heavenly Father has good things prepared for us. And the second thing is from Psalm 84, verse 10 and 11. For a day in your courts is better than a thousand. I would rather be a doorkeeper in the house of my God than to dwell in the tents of the wicked. For the Lord God is a sun and shield. The Lord will give grace and glory. Here it comes. No good thing will he withhold from those who walk uprightly. O oh, Lord of hosts, blessed is the man who trusts in you. No good thing will he withhold. Come. It's beginning to rain again. Maybe you've been in a physical drought. You've gone through one challenge after another physically. Maybe you've been in a financial drought and, and it's just barely getting by. And maybe that even is a miracle. Maybe you are in an emotional, mental, spiritual, relational drought. You know, there's not been much affection, not much love. God is saying to you, it's beginning to rain again. Come on, believe. It's beginning to rain again. Believe. Oh, hallelujah. The Lord will give the rain, the early and the latter rain, and He will restore the years that have been dry and empty and where you have had to just barely get through. 
He is bringing harvest. He is bringing increase. He is bringing fruitfulness. He is bringing healing, health, wholeness, well-being. He is bringing miraculous physical restoration, miracles physically. He is bringing joy and excitement, forgiveness and healing and reconciliation and peace. He is bringing the reign of His favor and blessings. You know the story of Elijah in 1 Kings chapter 18 and how Elijah the Tisbite, as he's called, in other words, he comes from an area called Tisbite, how Elijah had to go to Agan the king who was married to Jezebel and say, at my word, there will be no rain for these next three and a half years. Why? Because the people's hearts against God grew so harsh and so idolist and evil that the Lord could not get their attention any other way. And I'm not saying that every drought that we have in our lives in one way or another is God trying to get our attention, but that He should get our attention is important, no matter what the reason is for the drought in our lives. And here was this drought and Elijah was sent to the crit. That was a little bit of water there. And the Lord says, there I will provide for you. And Elijah could have during that drought allowed himself to famish, but he, but he didn't because he trusted God. So you see, when we go through drought, emotionally, physically, financially, whatever area, health-wise, if we keep responding to the Lord, we see Him carrying us through that drought. Because there, the Lord commanded the ravens to bring Him meat and bread every morning and every evening. Ravens are not the kind of birds that will share their food with anybody, not even with their own kind, much less with, with a human being. And shows you that God has power in every situation to be able to carry us through. Then, when the crit dried up, the Lord spoke to Elijah and said, go to Seraphat. Seraphat was inside and was outside of the land of Israel. And, and he says, there I've commanded a widow to care for you. Now Elijah could have said, you know, I don't want to go there. Just not in the mood for, for Sinai. I don't like that country. And he could have famished in his drought because he wouldn't follow the leadership of God in the time of waiting, in the time of drought. Folks, just because you've gone through physical drought, financial drought, or whatever it may be, God can sustain you if you keep following His instructions. And Elijah didn't famish because he obeyed. And he went to Sidon and he came there to, to serve. And there, when he walked up to the well, which kind of was a meeting point within the city, within the town, the village, he saw a widow gathering a few sticks. And he looked at that widow and God had said, a widow will care for you. And widows were dressed in a certain way in those days that you could recognize them as widows. And he said to her, give me something to eat. She said, oh, alas. And she recognized he was a prophet of God by the way he was dressed. She says, I have just enough oil and flour to make one cake and then my son and I will perish. And the prophet Elijah said to her, no, make for me first and then for yourself. And there you can see how God commanded her because she obeyed. You see, com being commanded means God gives you the ability to follow what he says. And here she went home and she made bread for the prophet and gave it to him. And then she made it for herself and miracle of miracles. The flour and the oil never stopped during the whole time of drought. And God sustained the prophet and that widow and her son because they trusted in God. And so, yes, folks, we can get used to living like that. We can get used to living in a way that we, okay, I, I, I'm not healthy, I'm not well, but God's sustaining me, He's upholding me, I'm getting on with life. 
yeah, I, I don't, I can't pay everything, but I, I can just eat enough to not be hungry all the time. I, you know, in other words, you can be carried through the time of drought and learn to live that way when the Lord says, no, it's time for the rain. It's time. Uh, it's going to rain again. You're going to come into harvest, into increase, into fruitfulness, into health, into well-being, into joy and laughter and singing. With, with, and, and the Lord sent Elijah. Go with me there to 1 Kings chapter 18, verse 20. 1 Kings 18, verse 20. So Ahab sent for all the children of Israel and gathered the prophets together on Mount Carmel. And Elijah came to all the people and said, How long will you falter between two opinions? If the Lord is God, follow him. But if Baal, follow him. But the people would not answer him a word. And just quickly about Baal. Baal, people were thinking, was God. But it wasn't God. And God was trying to say to children of Israel all the time, I am not Baal. I am not like that. That is not my way. Baal is the word husband. Yes, that's what the word means, husband. But it's husband in the nature of master, controller, dictator, ruler. And God was saying, no man, men, don't follow this way in your home. Don't begin to manipulate and control your wives and, and make them subservient to you and make yourself superior to them. Don't, don't build your own that way. That's not my way. I'm not like that. I'm not like that. So this, this influence of what you call Baal does not represent me at all. And if you build your homes that way, you become estranged from me. And the way you are as man will not represent me. The way you are as women will not represent me. The way your children will believe that that is the custom of life. No, no. So, so Elijah says, if the Lord is God, follow him. But if Baal, follow him. But you got to choose. You can't do both because they're not the same. You see, there is a time in our life when we think it's okay to mix our ways of thinking and talking, but God comes in and says, no, no. I want, I want to be the one that you know is your source of joy and life, and I am not like that. I'm not the controller, manipulator, dictator, superior, you're inferior. No, I make you one with myself. I lay down my life to demonstrate my love for you. I lift you up into who I am and what I am so that all I am, you are. You see, there's a whole different nature to the spirit of Baal that says, submit to me, bow down to me, do whatever I tell you, you know, and that's not God's spirit. And that was the issue going on in those days, which does happen today as well. And so if we go to verse 30, please. And Elijah said to all the people, come near to me. So all the people came near to him and he repaired the altar of the Lord that had been broken down. And Elijah took 12 stones representing the 12 tribes of Israel according to the number of the tribes of the sons of Jacob. So who, uh, uh, to whom the word of the Lord had come saying, Israel shall be your name. Then with the stones, he built an altar Yes, and made, he built an altar in the name of the Lord, and he made a trench around the altar large enough to hold two sheaves of seed. And he put the wood in order and so forth, you know, and he prepared the altar for the Lord, okay? And it came to pass at the time, verse 36, of the offering of the evening sacrifice that Elijah the prophet came near and said, Lord God of Abraham, Isaac and Israel, let it be known this day that you are God in Israel and that I am your servant and that I have done all these things at your word. Hear me, O Lord, hear me that this people may know that you are the Lord God and that you have turned their hearts back to you again. 
Then the fire of the Lord fell and consumed the burnt sacrifice, the wood, the stones, the dust, and licked up the water that was in the trench. And when all the people saw, they fell on their faces and they said, The Lord, He is God, the Lord, He is God. Oh, how exciting. I really believe with all my heart that we're living in this day that God is ready to make it rain by His Spirit upon His church and His people and to show the world that who, He alone is God and that there's none besides Him and cause multitudes of precious souls to be added to the church. I really believe that day is here upon us because from that moment, Elijah said to Ahab in verse 41, Go up, eat and drink, for there is the sound of an abundance of rain. When you see, listen, when you see the people's hearts, the people of God's hearts coming back to the Lord instead of being indifferent and idle like so many today, they love the world. They love the ways of the world. They get drunk. They, they don't come to church when they don't feel like it. Did I pray? Did I read the Bible? I don't know, but I, one thing I know, I don't know, one thing I know, they're coming back. God is turning the heart of His people back to Himself all over the world because it's time for the rain to come again. Oh, hallelujah. He says, go up eat and drink, there's the sound of an abundance of rain. This is the Spirit of the Lord talking in him when there's still no change to the environment. The drought is as heavy as it was from the first day. And Elijah went up on the mountain there and he put his face between his knees and wept to God as he bowed down. It's kind of like sitting on your knees, right? And then putting your face right up to your knees. And he's crying out to God, crying out to God. You know what I find so interesting? God said it to Elijah. It, the rain is coming again. He said it. He said it. It's beginning to rain again. And yet Elijah prayed. You see, just because we know by the Spirit that it's time for things to happen doesn't mean we shouldn't be partners with God to see it come to pass. So I want to encourage you, be a partner with God. See it come to pass in your own home, in your own lives, in your own family, in the church right here, in the church wherever you are. Come on, it's going to rain again. You're going to see it. And my goodness, seven times the prophet said to his servant, go and see, look over the sea. And the seventh time his servant came back and said, I see a cloud the size of a man's fist coming out from the sea. And Elijah said, run, run before the rain stops you. And Ahab, <laughs> the king who had eaten his belly food while Elijah was praying. Some people, they're eating while others are praying. It's okay. It's going to rain again anyway. And, <laughs> and he's just riding along. You know, 21 miles across the Valley of Jezreel. He's just riding along and just going his own pace there with his horses on his chariot. And all of a sudden, he sees Elijah running past him. And Elijah says, run ahead. The rain is coming before it stops you. <laughs> My goodness, how exciting that we could have such a spirit to run past the people that are indifferent and idle and said, run because it's, it's beginning to rain again. And what a joy to see the rain coming down, the rain of God's favor, the rain of God's increase, the rain of God's blessings, the rain of God's Holy Spirit upon all of His precious people. Amen. Have a good day.